Thank you guys for staying up late again. Once again, um, really excited to uh, add uh, Josh Myers, you know, offensive lineman from Ohio State, uh, really versatile guy that can play anywhere inside. Um, he's a two-year starter at center, a captain, and then uh, came coming back in the third round and picking up Amari Rogers from Clemson, uh, wide receiver, special teams guy. So two really high-quality individuals, uh, really good young men that I think will fit very well within our team and locker room. Thanks, Brian. <laughs> we'll start with uh, Mike Spofford. Brian, what's uh, what's the favorite thing that you like about each of these guys you picked tonight? You know, I, I think they're both really good players. I think the, the their wiring and – the character of who the, these guys are, um, you know, really impresses me. Um, you know, Josh is a, a 6'5", 310-pound center. Uh, he's very, very smart, uh, very, very strong. Played at a, at a high level at Ohio State for a couple of years there. And then Amari, uh, you know, he's the son of a coach. Um, he's kind of been a pro from an early uh, age. He's very um, kind of uh, polished as a route runner and, and, and what they do there at Clemson. So um, I'm just really excited about what, you know, what they can do on the field, but then also just the kind of the character those those men will bring to our locker room. Matt Schneiderman. Brian, you said you weren't going to make a trade involving Rodgers, but <laughs> uh, I guess we can forgive you. Um, <laughs> how much can he do? He said uh, returning punts has kind of been his bread and butter. Can he play slot, outside, return punts? Do you, do you kind of like the versatility he brings? Yeah, no doubt, Matt. I think he's really he, – he fills so many holes for us, and that's one of the reasons I think that why we traded up for him was because – you know, not only as a punt returner and a slot receiver, but, you know, as, as you guys have seen over the past couple of years, the creativity that Matt has within his offense, uh, some of the jet, you know, sweeps and, and screens. And uh, I think he's obviously he's a 212-pound receiver. He's not one of these smaller guys. So I think kick returning could be part of his arsenal as well. So uh, I think he's just built for us. He's built for up here in Green Bay. And um, he's just a very versatile player, very smart player. And, um, you know, we're just we were really glad to, to add him to the roster. Bill Huber. Yeah, speaking of being built for up here, remember I asked you before the draft about drafting short guys and then you drafted <laughs> a shorter guy. So right. um, so I guess why – what what made you pull the trigger on, on this guy compared to the legion of guys you've passed over over the years? Yeah, I think um, I think a little bit has to do with – I think, you know, Matt's creativity uh, and using some of these different body types uh, is helpful. Uh, again, and I mentioned it earlier, Bill, he's – this guy's – he's short, but he's not small. You know, he's 212 pounds. Uh, when you when you see him and you get up on him, he's not a small man. He just He's just not tall. Um, so I, I, I do think he's a little different maybe than some of the, the other slot guys you see across the league because he's just – he's built a little bit more like a running back. So um, he gave me great comfort because I think one of the things he does and I think you have to do in this league is you can't run by everybody in this league. you got to be able to take contact on and break tackles, and, and he's certainly one of the kind of guys that can do that. Aaron Nagler. Brian, how much comfort do you have with uh, Josh, the fact that he comes from a big-time program with Ohio State and the experience there as far as he's obviously going to have to come in and compete, but the fact that he could step in right away and play for them? Yeah, no, I, I, very much so. Uh, obviously, that program there, I mean, Coach Day and the way they, they do things at Ohio State um, is at a very high level. I also think with linemen, you know, coming from kind of the power fives, I mean, every single day in practice, they're going against guys that are probably, you know, have NFL futures or at least their prospects in some way. So I think there's a bit of a hardening that goes on uh, through that process that allows those guys maybe to step in to the National Football League at a quicker pace than some. So um, a lot of confidence there. Again, like I, like I said before, team captain, he was one of those centers who kind of ran the show there. And, uh, um, you know, he's going to – he's a little bit bigger than maybe some of the centers we've had in the past here, um, which is something obviously um, – that I like. So I think he's going to be a nice addition to our group. Rob Reichel. Ryan, there was a run on offensive linemen from, I think about picks 45 to 53. Was it hard for you to sit back and watch that go on? Were, were you contemplating trying to get up into that, into that mix or was your board deep enough there at that position that you felt okay waiting till 62? Yeah, kind of both Rob. I mean, um, yeah, it was tough watching all those guys come off. Uh, at the same time, um, our board stayed strong. Uh, I felt really good about the the options we, we were going to have as that kind of came down towards us. Quite frankly, it came down to to Josh and Amari. You know that those were the two um, guys that we got to 
pick that pick in the second round that we were looking at. Um, we went with Josh because I think you know the center and, and being a big guy. Uh, and immediately after I got off the phone, I, I turned around to see if we could get back up to get Amari. And uh, a couple of my guys had gone down to grab something to eat, so we, we had to get everybody back on the phones and moving fast. Um, but we, you know, we were trying pretty significantly to get up uh, to, to go get Amari. Took us a little while, you know, longer than we wanted to. Uh, we paid a little bit of a price, but I thought it was important because of the value of the player that I, that I wanted. Jason Wilde. Hey, Goody, how are you? How are you, Jason? I'm magnificent, thanks. Um, you uh, you talked about need and how that factors in when we talked to you on Monday. Mm -hmm. How did that factor in tonight? You obviously like these both these guys a lot, but was it important to get a lineman and was it important to get a receiver today? Yeah, I think so. Um, I don't think it was going to be one of those things that we do at all costs, Jason. You know how kind of we operate. We're going to let the board speak to us. And if the needs that we have, uh, if it's just not in the cards to take them at uh, our particular pick, we're not going to force it. Um, but I really do feel the three the three players that we took, um, you know, over the last two days, just it, it, the the stars aligned a little bit for us uh, with some of the things that I think uh, were important to acquire within this draft. So, um, you know, taking a corner and a versatile inside offensive lineman, and um, you know, a receiver that can do some of the things maybe that uh, we haven't had here for a little bit. You know, in, as far as uh, in the slot and some of the return stuff. I think, you know, we feel good about the first two days and, and really looking forward to tomorrow. Ross Uglum. Hey, Brian, uh, you mentioned just kind of offhand that you thought Myers could play anywhere inside. I think everybody's kind of making the link to him being a Corey replacement center, Ohio State, et cetera, et cetera. Do you feel like he has a chance to compete at a spot that isn't center? Yeah, I, th I certainly think he has the versatility to do that. I think, obviously, he's been a center the last couple of years. And, um, you know, I think one of the things Matt and I have talked about is just, you know, we have some really versatile uh, guys on our offensive line as we sit here today with, uh, obviously, Elton Jenkins and, and Billy Turner. You know, Elton probably can play all five spots in the National Football League, and Billy could probably play all four, you know, four of the five. So um, that is a, a great asset for us. And, and it's important to us as we actually address offensive linemen, we're always looking for that versatility. Um, if we're able to find a center, and if that's Josh, if he can win the center job, um, then obviously it frees those two guys up. To, as we go through a season, if we do have injuries, you can move those guys around. I think when you have a center, and they're so in tandem with their quarterback, um, it's tough to move those guys in the middle of the season. You know, And uh, it's tougher to move them, I say. It's not impossible, but I think uh, – You'd like to, to, to keep that one sound and, and allow those other guys to move around if, if you have to. So, um, again, we're always, you know, I think I think Ted did a good job here, and certainly I think we've continued that of trying to find guys who can do multiple things on the offensive line. It's just a, um, it's a very comforting thing as you go through a season. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Steve McGargy. Both of these guys have shown they've been able to come back from injuries. Amari with the ACL in 2019 and Josh late last season with – with the toe, I was just wondering, how did that impress you? What they'd done and be able to recover from that, and is Josh's toe an issue at all moving forward? Gotcha. Yeah, no, obviously, um, you know, our medical staff, led by Flea and Doc McKenzie and Doc Evan, they uh, we, we do a lot of uh, research and, and vetting over the past uh, I don't know how many weeks now, and felt good about both those guys. I do think, you know, we're always looking for guys who've had some adversity, uh, not not always you know injury related, but. Um, have they been able to get over adversity and get to the other side of it? I think that's very important. There are times when we'll, we'll acquire some players that haven't had that, and, and the NFL is a tough, a tough place to learn how to deal with adversity. So you think, you know, looking at those two guys and what they have over, overcome um, gives you a little, little faith that they can handle the ups and downs of the National Football League. Rob Domofsky. Hey, Brian, your, uh, your new receiver said he would love to get the opportunity to play with your old quarterback. Um, does this pick in any way had helped that situation at all, or is that not what this was about? First of all, he's not our old quarterback, right? He's our, is our quarterback <laughs> and our leader. Um, old, old, I meant by age. I got you. I, I don't look at it that way either. Um, <laughs> you know, he's got a lot, a lot left in the tank. So, uh, but I think, you know, I think I hope everybody on our team and, and within our, our building is excited about Adam Amari. Um, you know, we, I think it was something we wanted to add. We've wanted to add for a few years, you know, kind of that, that guy that can play inside and, and do some returning. So, um, you know, I hope everybody's pleased with it. 
Wes Hodkowitz. Hey, good evening, Brian. I didn't really realize until tonight uh, all the connections between Amari and Randall. Uh, I, I'm just curious, when you look at him, <clears throat> especially him mentioning you know, how much of a friendship he kind of formed with them, do you see any parallels in their games at all, or do you, do you see anything there that uh, that kind of reminds you of Randall? Yeah, I think I've all, I always try to stay away from that. I mean, Randall Cobb's a bona fide player in the National Football League that's proved a lot of things in his career. So um, I think Amari's got a bright future, and I'm sure that that's someone he'll, you know, be, you know, speaking of the relationship, I'm sure that's someone he'll kind of to look to and pattern himself after, you know. Um, but I think any of these guys that have done things in the National Football League, I, you, know, you hate to compare too much. Tom Silverstein. <clears throat> Hey Brian, it was about a sudden parter, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> just to start out, did you have any contact with Rogers again today? I mean, is that going to be a daily conversation? Gotcha. Uh, no, I did not today. Um, like I said, obviously, you know, with the draft at hand, um, we were kind of focused on that. Okay. And then did I get it right? Um, hear you right that when you got to the second round pick, you, you might've taken Rogers there if, yes. uh, if he was. So, what was the process like uh, trying to find that spot where you could get them in the second round? Were you having trouble getting um, people who were willing to move? Yeah, a little bit. Um, you know, after the after the pick, we we kind of targeted an area of the of the third round where we thought we could get to with a, with within the price that I wanted to pay. Um, we were having trouble. Um, you know, we had a few teams that were on the line right until the you know until their pick came up, and then there was a guy they wanted to pick, and so. We had four or five, I think, um, you know, trades that were about to happen that didn't, and um, and then that, then obviously we finally made the trade with Tennessee as it got closer. And um, I, you know, I, I I'll kind of go back to I remember when we drafted Clay Matthews, and obviously I was the Southeast scout at that time, but I remember after we drafted B.J. Raji, Ted, you know, talked about going up to get to get Clay, and there was a couple of guys in the building that were working the phones at the time, and well, how far do you want to go up? How much do you want to pay? And he's like. I want the player, <laughs> you know, and like every time, you know, John Schneider or Reggie McKenzie or I think Dorse was there as well. And they would start talking about, I think this is a little too much. And he's like, you guys aren't understanding. I want the player, <laughs> you know? So um, there was a little bit of that there. I think it was, and it was important that, that we acquired the player. And I'm obviously you, you never want to overpay too much, but um, we were really excited to get Amari. Mark Daniels. Hey, Brian, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm good. Um, how hard is it to start at, at center as a rookie in the NFL? And ideally, I know you've talked to the versatility, uh, but ideally, uh, how much would you like to keep Jenkins and maybe even Lucas at, at the spots they play best? Yeah, I think um, it's, it's, it's hard to start at any position in the National Football League as a rookie, I'll say that. Um, and obviously, center uh, being kind of a nerve center position, um, you know, there's probably a little added weight to that. I do feel really good about Josh and his, his potential to do that. And you know, obviously there's a lot of work and earning it ahead of him. But um, he comes from a place that you know, there's high demands there. He's handled it very well. He was a team captain there. Um, he's very, very smart. Um, so um, I think we'll give him every shot uh, to earn that. Um, I do think, obviously, players are better when they can stay in one spot. I think it's just the way they can do. We do have some very unique guys and um, the ability to kind of have some freedom there to leave them there or move them to tackle if, if we can is uh, is something I think we would like to do. Pete Doherty. Hey, Brian. Um, did, any calls on uh, Aaron Rodgers today? And did you get any – have you gotten any closer today to resolving that one way or another? Yeah, no calls today. And um, like I said, um, any conversations or, or things between Aaron and us is, is something I'm not going to talk about. Andy Herman. Hey, Brian, I'm certainly not pretending to know your athletic thresholds, but it seems like Amari may have missed a couple of those, maybe by a hair. How much do you have to like someone as a player to potentially go outside of those thresholds, especially in the top 100? Yeah, I, don't, I mean, I, I don't I don't think that there's like we have kind of these thresholds that we're not you know, willing to go outside of. Uh, it's really about the football player more than the, the, the testing athlete, so to speak. Um, so he, he really hit, you know, with the exception of his height, he really hit most of the things that um, we were looking for in, in the role that he's going to play for us. So I did feel um, his pedigree, uh, his performance in college at a, on a big-time stage were, were, were things that comforted us and, and feeling like he could step in and, and be a productive player for us you know, early in his career. 
Mike Clemens. Hey, last time when we were talking about Aaron Stokes, uh, Eric Stokes, I remembered a couple of years ago during a press conference, someone asked you, uh, do you think this particular player could be a shutdown corner someday? And you said, you know, the way the passing rules have changed, I don't know if there's such a thing mm -hmm. as a shutdown corner. When you see five or six guys in the secondary, so many snaps in the game, is corner the toughest position to fill these days? I think it's always been pretty tough to fill, um, and I, I do agree with that statement that I that I made back then. It is I, it is very hard to find shutdown corners. We we are fortunate to maybe have one of those guys in Jair, um, but uh, that is becoming such a um, secondary play in this league is is becoming more and more important as we go, just because of the rules, and it's just a very much a passing league. Um, as a defense, if you can affect if you can affect the passing game. Um, you know, you're going you're gonna to be in a pretty good spot. Ryan Wood. Ryan, you mentioned uh, Josh's height at 6'5". Mm -hmm. what, what do you like about a, a center and a tackle's body? What, what, what does that height maybe do for him at that position? Yeah, I, I think, um, you know, um, for me, you know, I'm always looking, especially up here in Green Bay, and we want to kind of build a bigger physical intimidating line. And um, – I do think that at the center spot, you know, with what we ask those guys to do, there's a certain amount of athleticism and bend that they have to have that not all, not all big guys do. Uh, Josh is one of those six five guys that has those capabilities. So um, I do think, you know, just size in general on the offensive line is something we, we strive for. And um, we're, I think we've over the past three or four years, we've been able to kind of change the way our offensive line looks a little bit. Bill Rabier. Hey, Brian, you mentioned uh, Amari's father, and, and Josh comes from a, an athletic family. And last year, you take Runyon, and uh, I guess you go back to Clay. They all have that athletic lineage. Clearly, that's something that's important. Why is that so appealing to you? Yeah, you know, I mean, I, well, I'll say this. I don't, I don't know how you know, much. It's probably just more osmosis being around Ted Thompson because he was very much talked about bloodlines and lineage and um, – you know, I do think, you know, uh, being a coach's kid, there's just some things maybe that, um, you know, that you pick up that maybe you wouldn't pick up. Maybe you're, you know, you look at Amari and he's just, uh, both these guys, Amari and, and Josh, are just they're very polished college players. And um, that there certainly could be some, some correlation there with, with how they grew up and what they grew up around. Aaron Nagler. Brian, last year after the draft, you had mentioned how you felt a little hamstrung after giving away the fourth rounder to move up and get Jordan. The fact that you really couldn't move up the board to get guys that maybe you liked. How easy was it today or how much easier was it today when you did turn around after you picked Josh and say, go get me my player <laughs> because you knew you had a couple of fourths to play with? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, I think the one of the hardest things uh, throughout the draft is when you have a, a, a large number of picks between your picks, so to speak. And you have to wait a long time. You know, there's been times, I think, in, in our history here that we may have had over 100 picks go in between our picks. That's tough. You, know, you do a lot of work, and, and, you, and you, you want to help your football team, and there's these guys up there that can help your football team and have to watch those guys come off the board is, is tough. So I think you'd always like to have you know, some balance with, within your draft as far as that goes. Um, you know, This year, having kind of two fours, two fifths, and two sixths, it gives us a little bit of flexibility. Um, and as we were working to, to try to acquire um, Amari, I did want to try to keep uh, that flexibility and not have to give up two force or um, two fists and just have a, a long wait. But at the end of the day, it's about the player. And if it's, uh, if it's the player you think can help the football team, you'll, you'll do what you have to do to get him. We'll do two more. Bill Huber. Yeah, going back to, to Myers, there, there are a couple other pretty touted centers on the board at that time. Um, what was the tipping point there in, in Josh's favor? Yeah, I think uh, there was. It's, it was a pretty good center class up at the top this year. Right. And, uh, I thought we had some options. Um, but Josh is a guy, I think, that, um, again, his size, his athleticism, his power, his uh, how smart he is and what they asked him to do at Ohio State and understanding he could handle some of that here, um, I think was was intriguing to us. And um, he just he, – I think he fit what we're all about.